Are you guys ready to go out to the pasture? Bert and Ernie, or Bert and Ernette, still aren't sure. They're not quite yet to that size, but I'm ready for you to be out of my office. Yeah, let's get you guys out to pasture. So Bert and Ernie, or Bert and Ornette, I know at least one of them is a male. He poofed up and he fanned his tail out. I think we might have, uh, I think it might be Bert and Ernette. They are a month and a half old now, six weeks old. I mean, they're huge. They're, <laughs> they're really big. We were waiting for them to get big enough that we knew that they would stay confined in the poultry net. We're gonna bring, move them out to pasture today. <laughs> female and breed her to a standard to try and get an in-between. You literally have clean water in your tractor, but you prefer to drink the duck's pool. You literally have a full five-gallon bucket of water. Well, almost full. We all got, like, a lot of water. Plenty of water. And y'all gotta drink the duck pool. Is that how lazy you are? You're just that lazy? So lazy? Very lazy. <laughs> Turkeys, time to meet the flock. Come on, come on, guys, time to meet the flock. Come on, come on. Here we go. Go say hi. Meet your flock. Let's see how they get along. You gotta find the water. Go get some water. Go get water first. One, no. Nope. There you go. Come on, Ernie. Let's go. Come on. Mm -hmm. Come on. Go that way. Come on. Come on. Oh my goodness. Come on. There you go. No, 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 no. Go. No, no. Go that way. There you go. See, this is your new home. Your new home. See? This is yours. You're going to be part of this now. First things first. Bert, you're first, bud. Come here. We'll learn how to drink. Water? No, come on. Ha <laughs> ha 
I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let them relax and acclimate. Doesn't look like the ducks or the chickens are too interested in harassing them and um, that's because they're bigger. And I did that intentionally. I wanted them to get big so that the, the chickens and the ducks are less likely to try and harass them or get into, get into it with them. So, they look a little calmer now. Nice and cool in here in the shade. I know it's hot out here. This is going to be totally different from the air conditioning of my office. So, and you guys, they got a roost. You guys are going to be much happier out here than in my office. I promise you that. <laughs> So now that the turkeys are out here, I can clean out my office because <laughs> I'm so sick of the brooder box and the, uh, the fruit bin box, which has been used as a brooder, taking up the space in there. So it's definitely not fun keeping full-size turkeys in your office, but now that they're out, I'm happy. So I gotta be honest with you guys, since the flooding in the garden, I kinda let it go. I kind of struggled with getting it back up and running. Um, we did plant some okra. The, uh, as you can see with the tunnel, that bounced back, but only with loofah. The loofah took over, which I'm fine with. Nothing was growing there. I was skeptical to plant anything new because it is rainy season, so we, I was like, are we gonna have another flood like that? I, I was like kind of afraid to plant anything new there until we get this whole garden reconfigured with the leveling. So I just kind of let the loofah take over. I've been pruning it, trying to keep it just kind of like to the trellis. I started to work on reclaiming the strawberry patch. The strawberries are doing great. They're not like hindered by it really. I'm sure they could have taken over more, but they're not like, we're not losing them. Asparagus is doing great. I'm still wondering when exactly I'm supposed to cut these down. Cause I mean, they've established, pretty sure they've established, but we got to get in here and weed heavily. I've actually got a friend of mine coming out next week to help me get this tackled because this is just bad. The marigolds are gorgeous. Look at how beautiful the marigolds are. Pollinators have loved this, but just look at that trellis. I need to actually, I'm afraid to cut this. I might actually just kind of like pull it back just so that we can start getting in there easier. It's, it's pretty, pretty taken over. Which I'm not gonna complain because we're gonna get loofah. At least we're gonna get something from this trellis when I thought we were gonna lose everything from the flooding. I started work on getting the tomatoes pulled up. I got this row almost completely pulled up. Then I gotta pull up this row. This one looks like it tried to survive, but this looks like something's eating it. So, but I'm not too worried. I've got whole fresh new tomato plants growing right now. Oh, yep, found you. There you are. I found the thingy eating. We're gonna be ripping all of this up, uh, moving it elsewhere in the garden so that I don't have to worry about my tomatoes getting flooded. Onions and garlic, you can't see it all that well in the weeds. Once again, those are getting pulled up, but we pulled up the bunching onions, but these are the bulbing onions, and those, are, those and the garlic, are, we're gonna try and transplant those elsewhere where they can do a little bit better. But they survived the flooding, thankfully. We actually have one Swiss chard that looks like it survived. I've been ignoring this, this some of these some parts of the garden. But our okra, look at our okra. Our okra seems to love the flooding because this was actually in standing water, and it it didn't even it didn't even phase it. It was just like bring it on. Um, I'm actually late on harvesting. I've been harvesting okra like crazy, but this batch. I forgot to harvest yesterday. You pretty much, I've been pretty much having to harvest every single day just to keep up with them. Like, see, look, this one. This one just appeared. Look at how long that is, that's, that's too long. I'm just gonna have to let that go to see, let that go and harvest it for seed. The peppers, that's a pepper plant. That's a pepper plant, look. We got banana peppers. This garden is like atrocious right now, oh my gosh. I can't wait to get it cleaned up and we're gonna likely because I kind of miscalculated the peppers and that. They're just a little touch too close, so I'm gonna likely move the peppers over here to this row. And uh, we'll just have, 
we'll have the peppers and the okra close to, closer together, but we actually, looks like most of our peppers survived. They struggled for a bit, but they're coming back now. Look at this one. This one's already starting to kind of branch out and spread out. So the peppers are bouncing back. Corn. So we had some shoddy germination on the corn and um, I actually transplanted some corn. But another thing that was weird is I guess I didn't plant it deep enough because I was like, I'm pretty sure I planted it deep enough, but some of them are like tilted over. Like you see this one, how it's tilted over? And you can see, like I actually had to lift some of them up and replant them because they just weren't deep enough. And that's, that's my fault. Like this one, see this one? Leaning over. But I mean, they're starting to flower on the top. We've got some, you can see some corn silks on some of them, which is why I'm like not sure if we're gonna get, like see we got one here, one there, a couple there. So we might get a few heads of corn, which I mean, that'd be cool. It'd, be, it'd still be the first time we ever got corn out of the garden, but definitely was a learning experience. Um, I think I just need to plant them much deeper next time. Cause I know it's, they're supposed to be planted at least an inch but if you guys have any advice on how deep you plant your corn please let me know because I thought an inch was deep enough but now it's looking like maybe I should have planted them two inches deep. The big thing we're going to tackle though next week is get this garden weeded, weeded um, transplant out the new plants and hopefully I can at least get something of a late summer harvest which I'm sure will be fine. It's starting to, we, I think we're past the, the heat, the miserable heat because there was a period where it was 98 degrees but the humidity was 100% and that humidity makes it feel hotter. So there were days where it felt like it was 109 degrees and because the humidity was so high, you'd sweat and your sweat couldn't evaporate. So you just felt like totally disgusting. So I think it's gonna get better from here on out. It's, it's not as intense. I think the highs have been like low 90s the last uh, couple weeks. So I also gotta dismantle the old goat shade hut. That's got to get this man to move so I can get under there, but I'm actually going to need more mulch. Sky! Sky, Luke! What are you guys doing? Luke, you guys are a little dirty. You're a little dirty. Did you have a little fun? You look like you had a little fun. Sky, hi pretty girl. Are you guys buddies now? I'm so glad to see you guys getting along. Oh, we gotta go see Magnolia. Good morning. Good morning, chicken nuggets. Where's Mag Magnolia? Good morning, Magnolia. How you doing, mama? You guys are just so huge. I know, you guys are ready for breakfast. Let me get you some breakfast. Fat chickens are fat. Magnolia! Hi, beautiful girl. Look at all them fluffy feathers. I want to pet you. Duck, 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 duck. We'll give you guys the names of the babies you guys have been voting and um, we're gonna give it a couple more days but it's pretty strong what the names are gonna be so keep an, keep an eye out for the next vlog we'll let you guys know the names uh, I think we're gonna go ahead and clip Bert and Ernie at Bert and Ernie or Bert and Ernette uh, we're gonna clip their wings just because I'm afraid that they might try and jump the fence they've been walking the fence line back and forth trying to figure it out so but they're gonna be much happier out here so hi bird and ernet <laughs> I, I think it's a bird and ernet because they're starting to show their differences so i think it's a bird and ernet